Hey morning folks, I uh, hope you're well. This is Dr. Manon here. I'm a GP uh, in Rosendale, Lancashire. Um, look, I work as a, a GP here in my own practice um, and often I get people asking me, well, what do GPs do? You know, what's going on? You know, uh, why uh, aren't we seeing patients? Why, you know, um, you know, our GP sitting around doing nothing, that type of thing. And it does pain me, if I'm honest with you, uh, when I read these comments and when I come across these comments, because the reality is uh, uh, far from those kind of uh, remarks, really, uh, much different to what uh, some people might think. Um, anyway, it's Monday morning. Um, I've come to my practice. Um, work started uh, for me at uh, half eight. Um, and I've come in, I've already gone through a number of patients, um, including the kind of more urgent uh, patients, which my care navigators, my receptionists have allocated as urgent uh, calls. So um, of them, I've already arranged a home visit uh, for a patient of ours um, who will need one of our doctors to go out and actually visit them because potentially this person needs to be in hospital. Um, so that's been something that's took about half an hour or so to sort out. So it's not one of those things that you can just do in 10 minutes. And remember, we only get about um, 10 minutes per patient, if that. Um, anyway, that's uh, been sorted. Uh, hopefully, he'll be okay. Since then, I've spoke to another of my patients who, again, is an urgent case. And she um, isn't feeling so well. Um, you know, the doctors who uh, saw her over the weekend, this, these were GPs who do uh, shifts over the weekend and overnight, uh, which I do sometimes. Um, and a lot of GPs do those, so they do kind of work out of hours and in the evenings. And uh, so this person did have a GP visit and they thought, you know, is it something to do with their blood pressure? Had they had a mini stroke or something? So I had to kind of uh, double check what's going on there. And what we've decided is that uh, there is a blood pressure problem. There is something to do with the fact that also weather has been very warm um, last week or so and one thing I come across quite a bit in the UK is that when it gets really warm people dehydrate especially if you're bed bound if you're house bound if you're uh, elderly um, people aren't drinking enough people aren't hydrating enough and so they feel faint they pass out they fall over uh, and so forth they wilt essentially um, so I think this is something that's going to uh, happen with my patients and so I've given her the appropriate advice as well as of course arranging urine tests blood tests um, getting a blood pressure monitored um, and, and also a call from my um, e clinical assistant who will ring. This is a, um, a care navigator who's more specialised and good at uh, helping out the GPs in reviewing our patients. So that's what will happen. So all of this has been going on on top of all the queries that I've had to sort out since I've come in. I'll take you along with me throughout the day today to, so you get an idea as to what's going on. The time is now 9.46, so um, I'm about, um, what, hour and 15 minutes into the day. And, um, you know, so it's been pretty busy so far. So I'll keep on logging in, talking to you like this, and hopefully you get an idea as to what it's like in the day uh, of a GP. So this is uh, where I work from, guys. This is my own uh, room here in my surgery. Uh, as you can see behind me uh, is the rest of my room. It's uh, uh, this couch over there that we use for patient examination. Um, I've got uh, my workstation there. Um, I stand up and work. Um, it's good for my back. It's um, uh, you know, it's, I just find it's a better way to work really rather than uh, uh, sitting down. Um, the workstation they're only about a couple of hundred quid from Amazon. Uh, it helps the uh, uh, computer system to go up and down, and I recommend it to uh, you know uh, a lot of people really because it just lets you stand up. It lets you sit down when you want to. Uh, it's, 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 you know, it's a good way to it, especially someone like me who's uh, working from here uh, for uh, long hours uh, of the day. Uh, you're talking anything uh, from eight hours to uh, uh, 12, 13 hours sometimes. Um, I've got a couple of screens because uh, we, there's a lot of computer software to use. Um, on the main screen uh, there, I've got the what we call the EMIS software. Um, I'm recording at a distance because really we can't um, show you any patient details and for confidentiality purposes. And, um, you know, on there, I've got um, um, quite a lot uh, going on today. It's uh, Monday morning. Um, so this morning, I'll deal with um, something like um, anything up to 20 odd patient episodes. Uh, that includes people I speak to on the phone, people I see face to face, uh, home visits. And it'll be a similar volume to deal with in the afternoon. 
Um, in terms of pathology results, so results of blood tests and scans and so forth, there'll be about, I think, about 100 or so for the, of them to process by about 1 o'clock today. Um, and I reckon I'll get another 50 to 60 to deal with in the afternoon. Um, so in total, about 160 odd pathology results. And that's why, uh, as you can imagine, I can't call every single patient up with uh, normal results. So we kind of expect patients to follow it up themselves. Um, anything that's urgent, so anything that's kind of serious, we tend to then chase patients uh, uh, to inform them of their results. Um, besides the pathology, pathology results, sorry, um, we've also got the what we call EPS, the electronic prescribing system. And these are prescriptions that people are on, regular prescriptions. Um, the, of course, those of you that are in the UK, you'll know that our prescriptions are uh, uh, you know, free for uh, a lot of people who are kind of unemployed or on benefits or low income. And of course, if you're over the age of 60 uh, in England, uh, people who are uh, below the age of 60 and are, are working and are earning a uh, decent amount, they pay for their prescription. Uh, but again, it's about nine pounds something per prescription. Um, uh, whereas uh, in Scotland and Wales, uh, it's free for everybody really. Uh, so, but anyway, the prescriptions I was saying, um, there'll be easily a good uh, 250 to 300 of those to process. So it's not just about click, click, click. You have to kind of review each one and make sure, you know, everything's accurate, everything's right. So that's the kind of uh, work uh, that will have to be done uh, today. Um, there are, of course, uh, reports that need doing. I've already counted. There's about um, uh, over here. I don't know if you can see there. Um, there's about... Um, um, about five or six at the moment that need filling. These are long reports, so they'll take time. They take about half an hour to do each. Uh, I might get one done today by the looks of it. I'm not even sure if I'll get that done because it's, it's, it's looking quite busy. Um, the, um, on top of that, uh, you've got documents to read as well. There's letters, there's correspondence you get from hospitals, uh, from clinics, from other specialities and so forth. Uh, from patients themselves as well. They email us, they um, send us e-consults. Um, so we have to deal with all that as well. And there you've got another volume of uh, work to deal with as well. So we've got a team of people that work with us who try and help out with correspondence, but still clinical decisions and so forth that needs uh, dealing with. The clinician has to get involved really with those. Um, so there you go. That's uh, uh, how things are so far. I'll keep you updated as the day goes on. Hey guys, uh, hi, I hope you're doing all right. Um, so I'm actually part way through my morning face-to-face -face consultations. Um, I'm about to call in my third patient. Um, what was really supposed to be done by now, um, all six patients, we've only got to my third patient. That's because um, whereas each appointment is for 10 minutes, my first uh, appointment actually took up about 40 minutes because when a patient comes to you, it's not just a simple thing. You have to take a history. You know, you have to make notes, you have to examine, you have to have a discussion about what could be going on, so on and such forth. Um, and here the lady had another problem that really needed dealing with. And I, uh, you know, whilst we try and deal with just one problem at a time, it didn't make sense to send her away. Uh, really, it needed to be sorted out. And it's not a simple thing either. Um, and, 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 and so it takes time. Uh, and then my next patient took more than 10 minutes as well. So I've, I've just about um, uh, finished things here and I'm going to move on to my next patient. Um, I told you about my, uh, you know, the home visits that I needed sorted out earlier on and also uh, the urgent case that I had to deal with first thing in the morning. Well, I've just had another uh, email sent to me from a social services colleague uh, who is concerned about a patient who uh, isn't responding well, isn't taking medication, refusing uh, to cooperate with carers and they feel there could be something going on medically uh, with this patient. So uh, they've asked for an, a home visit there. So that's another home visit that needs sorting out today. So really, I've barely got to, it's 11.39 in the morning and you can see where things are. Um, I've also been hounded by admin uh, colleagues because patients are uh, wanting their prescription. You know, they should have ordered these actually in advance, but um, you know, a lot of people do, but then you've got other patients who won't and they, they, they're ordering last minute really and they want their prescription today so um, I'm, I've got about 159 prescriptions to sort out so I'm gonna have to jump on as soon as I've seen this other patient I'm gonna have to jump on 
uh, leave a couple of patients waiting, which I shouldn't be doing right now because of COVID rules and social distancing and so forth. Um, but I have to uh, do these prescriptions. Otherwise, there'll be people, uh, you know, worried about the medication. They may even start missing doses if, you know, uh, they, they've got, um, you know, no medication left. Um, but anyway, it is what it is. I'm going to jump on and do that. Um, I've not even had a look at the correspondence uh, pile. I've not had a look at uh, the path links the pathology results x-ray scans and things like that i've not even got to that yet uh, so we'll see how it goes <laughs> hey hi folks yeah so i've spoke to the social services colleagues and the care agencies to see what's going on with my patient um, uh, who lives in a, a sheltered accommodation place so i'm going to actually go out and see uh, patients as well so there's another visit that i'll have to do now uh, but we'll need to go and see because really I'm a bit concerned about what's going on with her. Um, and sometimes it's best to, you know, um, have a look for yourself and, and decide really. Uh, not that I don't believe my colleagues or anything, but I think to get a better perspective, it's best if I go out and have a look as well. Um, which um, it, it's nice to do that, but um, we, we don't always have the privilege or the time to do that, you see, because there's so much going on. Um, I've actually had to jump onto the computer again and do uh, loads of um, uh repeat prescriptions, acute prescription requests, because as I said to you before, people need them uh, quite urgently. Um, and, and I've done as many as I could, but um, the rest are going to have to wait. I'm hoping that this will be enough now for the next um, few hours. Um, I'm going to um, then um, uh, uh, switch on and get that visit done. But prior to that, the other thing I would say is, whilst I was doing the clinic, we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen um, patient queries. So these are queries on top of appointments. Um, and these are the kind of queries that staff can't sort out. So they're not admin type things. So um, the you know they try to sort out uh, the non-clinical things that they can chase letters and you know procedural things but when it's clinical they can't deal with it so they have to then send it to clinicians so uh, about 13 of those to sort out and they range from people who need drug conversions because uh, that particular drug isn't available anymore um, uh, a do not resuscitation order needs to be reviewed for a patient so somebody who's on palliative care um, somebody who's got a water infection does it need a phone consult but you know uh, enough information has been taken for me so that I can make a decision as to whether I can treat them or not um, somebody who um, is on um, certain type of medication that um, it's questionable whether we can carry on providing that because of their uh, age and profile you see so that needs a medication review um, I've had one two three four people here who've got the um, COVID, uh, the COVID uh, positive, and they've, they've got some needs. So, so they either need antibiotics, or uh, you know, because the conditions progress, then they've got a chest infection as well. Um, another patient who it was more of a kind of, I think it turned out to be more of a reassurance type situation, but she was quite nervous. She was how old? Um, Seventy-year-old lady, so who's uh, managed to get the uh, uh, the virus, and um, she, she's quite nervous about it. Of course, she's double vaxxed and. Uh, and all that so th there was a lot of reassurance needed there a lot of uh, kind of um, review of her ongoing medication as well so th th these kind of cases need dealing with so even though they're not appointments as such they kind of become appointments you know I've had to actually ring quite a few of these people so um, you cannot tot up out what I've done so far can't you really yourself so th this is typical really of how things are it's 12 48 so I'm well past morning I'm well into the afternoon uh, I don't think um, like like most days, I don't think I'll be able to get lunch break the way things are going because I need to go and do this uh, urgent visit, um, you know, um, that's come through from social services. Uh, staff have also alerted me that um, uh, there's a think there's some patients that I need dealing with. They've come through from 111, uh, so these are appointments that can be booked directly by 111 colleagues, um, and they're you know they. They're okay. I'm a bit miffed, really, with the type of bookings. They, they, they have to kind of call the patient within uh, an hour or two because that's those are the rules. But actually, uh, the query is about somebody's toenail, which, in my opinion, could have waited uh, a few days, really. It's not a painful toenail. It's something about to do with um, a long-term issue, really. 
um, you know, like an ill infection, which can wait, but you know, one 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 in their wisdom think it should be done within um, within two hours. But uh, so I don't know. But anyway, these things need to be dealt with. So I've got a few of these uh, that need sorting out. So you see, things coming in from all directions. So um, it's not that we um, aren't busy. It's not that we're not doing anything. It's not that we're playing golf. It's not that we are twiddling our thumbs. Uh, it's not that we are work shy. The reality is, um, folks, primary care um, deals with 90% of NHS episodes uh, in a given day. So every day you wake up in the UK, um, if there was, let's say, 100,000 NHS episodes, um, you can be assured that 900, um, sorry, 90,000 of those calls are being dealt with by primary care um, in, in, in GP surgeries and around GP surgeries uh, by our staff. Um, you know, so, so the vast majority are actually dealt with in the community. That's why we're so busy and that's why you can't get through to us and that's why you can't get an appointment that's why you get frustrated that's why you get upset and i know what it's like i've got my mum who's got health multiple health needs and uh we struggle to get gp appointments and it's not because her gp doesn't want to work or doesn't want to see her it's because i know she is absolutely um hammered with the amount of work she has to do the population in the uk has gone up by approximately 30 to 40 percent from the 1990s however the number of gps has not gone up People are living longer, a lot of health conditions, multiple health conditions, lots of medication, lots of different uh, types of intervention uh, can be done these days compared to uh, 30, 40 years ago, um, which is good. Uh, but all this needs care, all this needs people to look after people. And, and that's what we don't have in the UK. We don't have enough doctors, we don't have enough nurses, we don't have enough uh, staff. And the, you know, the, the other problem is the government does not invest enough in NHS full stop compared to uh, other countries. Uh, so compared to say um, Germany, uh, we probably invest about 60% of that budget in the UK. Uh, in America, they spend uh, more than double what we spend in the UK. I think it's triple from the last um, uh, data I, I looked at. Um, and, and one is, is questionable how good things are in America uh, and in other countries, but Point is, whatever we invest in the NHS is actually very well spent, and that, that's internationally recognised. However, um, you can only get out what you put in, and we don't put enough in to the NHS, in, into healthcare, into social care in the UK, and hence the problems we have. So, um, really, what we should be doing is looking at, um, um, you know, what what um, uh, we can say to our uh, MPs, what we can say to our governments, and say, look, you know, let's try and do things differently. Let's try and appreciate life better let's try and uh, look after our elderly better uh, and, and, and our communities and and healthier communities like leads to healthier economies better economies um, you know happier people uh, and, and so forth um, anyway talk to you later bye bye hi everyone it's me again um, so um, I'm sorry I couldn't uh, do the update uh, at work this afternoon it was just really mad busy so I had to keep going really until it was about uh, 6 45 p.m. Um, I normally am try quite disciplined about leaving work at half six but today it just got uh, uh, a bit later than that because we had to sort a few things out before I left um, but no um, I try to stay disciplined also uh, with coming home and actually uh, getting some exercises so I've actually just done a bit of workouts on the treadmill uh, I've got a bit more to do um, and I thought, you know what, before I forget, let's just do the kind of finale of today's video. Um, so when I came back from the home visit, um, I came back to again a dearth of work that had uh, built up over the, I don't know, hour or so uh, I was out. I didn't really get a chance for a lunch break um, uh, and I don't pride myself. It's not something I recommend to my trainees, to colleagues or to anybody for that matter. You need to take regular uh, breaks. Uh, lunch breaks and so forth otherwise the chances of mistakes increase at work job satisfaction goes down you're not as productive as well so you know I should kind of practice what I'm preaching really uh, unfortunately I didn't get around to do that and sadly it's been happening a bit too often lately um, but um, anyway point taken uh, when I got back from the home visit that needed to be uh, sorted out so involvement of social services integrated neighborhood team our care coordinator at work so that we can uh, help our patients with the medical and the non-medical problems that uh, uh, come about. So 
um, I had to do a mental capacity assessment on my patient. I had to uh, uh, kind of assess mobility of my patient. I had to uh, do like a mini mental state examination um, and see what, uh, you know, memory recall function and uh, how she was like that um, from a capacity point of view. So all that had to be done really so that I can come back and we can kind of see what, what, what else we can do to help our ladies stay independent, get the right care and is in the right hands to, um, so that the, you know, they can, we can maintain this person's dignity uh, and really how things should be in, in old age so that the care and uh, medical and social needs are wrapped around our patients, our uh, community, our elders, our, you know, whoever's in need so that they don't have to uh, struggle. Um, uh, you know, and certainly, you know, at least we can alleviate as much pain and as much difficulties in their life. Um, so that's the whole purpose of what we do in these kind of situations, complex, complex case care, uh, you know, which we need to, uh, as GPs, do more and more of these days. But this takes time, as you can see. Uh, it took um, um, about an hour or so by the time I came back to surgery. So the visit itself, right up another half an hour or so, um, talking to our care coordinator, involvement of the INT team, getting the messages across to social services, all of that, you know, and the initial call and assessment as well with the care agency. I think overall that took a good two and a half hour chunk of my time today. So can you see if I'm landed with, you know, two or three of them in a day, how quickly my time can be taken up. And these days, this is happening more and more to myself, my GP colleagues, because, you know, rightly so, people are uh, wanting care at home. They don't want to die in hospital. Um, and, and, you know, everything needs, sh needs to be and should be provided in their own um, care setting, in their own homes. But this takes time. And, and this is the thing. We've not really, um, you know, provided the resources in terms of manpower, in terms of who's available to um, do this work. And so it's landing on uh, GPs whilst um, we're having to provide acute care for our patients and also you know the non-complex cases chronic disease management and so on and such forth um, so you know th 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 that's where the problem is with uh, demand and how we, we struggle to meet that um, following that I had another uh, 15 patients to deal with these were remote and face-to-face uh, uh, -face, uh, patients um, various uh, kind of problems I mean everything's important and uh, you cannot ever underestimate the importance of uh, uh, a patient's uh, problem because for them that is a big problem you see so to be fair most patients actually contact us because they've got something important to talk about there's a big concern that they have no matter how trivial it might seem to somebody or someone else and um, it can be something quite significant to them and certainly psychologically affecting them uh, significantly so you know we, we do try and we want to um, you know be accessible to our patients but it, it must be terrible for our patients out there for so for, for the 15 people I dealt with this afternoon there must have been another 30 people I couldn't contact I couldn't manage because I was just simply too busy um, I've left the surgery today having dealt with um, I reckon another about 40 odd uh, blood results scan results and so forth which um, you know really needs to be dealt with on the day um, I think there were 12 uh, results I couldn't deal with but I did scan through them to make sure that they're not emergency they're not urgent results and they can be action tomorrow um, I managed to I'm quite happy about this I, I managed to squeeze in three reports which I've uh, managed to knock off there's still a few to do but there's always these things to do so um, you know and there's always non NHS stuff to do so somebody needs a letter for their um, sheltered accommodation uh, another patient needed a letter so they can get a bungalow on the ground floor uh, they're currently on the third floor, so going up and down stairs is a problem, falls risk, things like that. Um, so that had to be done. Uh, another patient needed uh, a letter for um, for immigration purposes so that uh, their partner uh, can come over uh, whilst uh, the relative's not well. So things like that have to be done as well. This is kind of non-NHS work, but it still has to be done, still has to be managed. Um, so really, in a, I think, what can I say? It's, um, yeah, um, it's been another busy day. Um, I missed our practice meeting. We were supposed to have our practice meeting at half 11 this morning. I couldn't attend that. Uh, so that's got postponed, um, which again, it kind of holds up other work 
uh, that we had to do. So we had to kind of look at our top 100 documents that have to be in place for CQC inspections. Uh, that had to be delayed for another time. Um, I also had to sit down with my manager to look at um, workforce planning. At the moment, uh, we've got people off um, sick uh, or isolating because of COVID-19. Uh, that impacts just the same, just like any other workplace, any other household, it affects us and our staff as well. So we're down on staff numbers. Um, we have other, you know, no, non-COVID related absences as well. Holidays, you know, so uh, my, one of our full-time salaried doctors is on holiday, but I don't have the financial means to replace his, uh, you know, the time he does for the practice. I don't have the means to replace that with another doctor you see whilst he's on annual leave so when somebody goes on annual leave we actually go down on manpower and when somebody goes off on sick we're down on manpower we don't have any replacement um, it's not like say hospitals and uh, other agencies where you can bring staff in it's not easy as that in general practice you see you have to manage with what you have um, so it's the challenges like that folks so really what what, what is my conclusion is this I guess um, that look um, as GPs, we're doing our very best to manage what is a very difficult situation, made even more difficult by the COVID pandemic. All right. Um, whilst managing COVID uh, cases, people who are unwell with COVID, keeping those nine out of 10 people out of hospital. Um, we're also having to deliver the vaccination program. 75% of UK's COVID vaccination program has been delivered by GPs and their teams. Uh, we're also starting to work on phase three, which is the boosters and flu vaccination. So we're already working on that in the background to deliver that for our patients starting from September. So there's all that work to be done. On top of that, we're uh, trying to work with communities, schools, businesses and so forth through what we call primary care networks so that our practices can practices can work more closely with uh, other partners in the community which is the right thing to do but as you can imagine all this takes uh, me away from frontline service all this needs more of me uh, more people like myself to do this kind of work but there isn't that capacity there isn't that kind of resource out there um, you know we you know we're having uh, e-consultations landed on us so people can email us people can uh, send an e-consult asking about their you know the swelling on their finger or whatever um, all that um, generates extra work on top of the work we have to do so um, no it's not for the um, you know want of playing more golf or having two or three hour lunch breaks or uh, being lazy it's not that at all uh, it's just that there just isn't enough of us it's just that there is a hell of a lot more work to be done um, it's just that people have more care needs rightly so um, but we just can't meet the needs um, that's why you're struggling to see me. That's why you struggle to make an appointment with me. Uh, that's why you feel when you come in to see me, you don't get enough time from me. That's why when I ring you, it feels like it's a rushed consultation, even though, you know, I personally try and give as much time as I can for my patients. And I'm sure lots of colleagues do the same, but I can't help but feel my patients feel sometimes that I'm rushing them. Um, it's really not because I don't like to, uh, people who know me know that I can talk for England. Um, it's not that, it's just um, the time is so precious, it's so difficult to afford the time to speak to everybody. Um, anyway, my uh, little boy over here is, um, uh, he wants me to go for a kickabout with him before he uh, goes for a shower. So I'm going to do that, uh, give him a bit of time and then uh, once he's at a shower, he's only sees he's in bed, I'm going to uh, get a bit of food. Um, and. Um, yeah, and I'm ashamed to say that'll be the first meal of the day. So I should have fasted, really. Uh, that'll be the first meal of the day. Um, anyway, guys, look after yourself. Please support primary care. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and let's try and avoid Daily Mail style, uh, you know, um, victimizing GPs and uh, just, just being nasty. We don't need that. Let's try and improve things around us. Uh, look after yourselves. Take care. Be good to yourselves. Bye bye now.